uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, how plants use endophytic microbes, both fungi and bacteria, in order to adapt themselves to their environment or to their local conditions. Basically, you know, what is an endophyte? An endophyte is a microbe, any kind of microbe, typically uh, either a bacterium or a fungus that goes in the plant and does not cause disease. Uh, endophyte, endo meaning inside, phyte meaning plant, endophytes actually go inside the plant cells. And so most of what I'm going to be talking about are endophytes that actually enter into the plant cells. Uh, this plant is a habitat for microbes. And, and in fact, it is these plants intentionally take in microbes from the soil. They'll take in bacteria into their root cells, into their root hairs. They'll take those bacteria all the way up into their leaves and they'll use them throughout the plant. And they will also associate with mycorrhizae, fungi that will then cover some of the roots or colonize some of the roots and then assist in nutrients. And these kind of associations in plants, they, they tend to be focused on nutrition. That is, the plants use these microbes to get nutrients, but they also have these very important effects on stress tolerance in the plants and growth promotion in the plants, similar kinds of beneficial effects in plants. Also making plants hardier, more resistant to environmental stress, oxidative stress. And I think I'll be talking about some of that as we go along. Uh, this is tomato. You think uh, tomato, inside a tomato is sterile, but in fact, it's not sterile. In fact, tomatoes, especially around these seeds, have a lot of bacteria, a lot of endophytic bacteria. And if you take the seeds out like this, some of these bacteria are vectored on the surface of the tomato. Some of them are vectored inside the tomato seed itself. So uh, that you could not remove those bacteria inside that tomato seed. And the, the reason for vectoring these endophytes, endophytic microbes, these bacteria in this case, inside the tomato seed and on the surface of the seed, with any seed, is so that the seedling that germinates is going to have access to those microbes, those endophytic microbes that the, that the parent plant, the mother plant, uh, had. And the mother plant transmit those microbes to the offspring, the seedling, through the seeds. But all of these microbes, whether they're on the seed or whether they're sucked out of the soil, are actually all from the soil. They're all soil microbes. If you look at the identities of these microbes, they're all largely soil competent microbes. It's just that the plant will take the most uh, beneficial microbes, it will take it into its tissues and then put it on its seeds so it can be vectored for that seedling. So endophytes provide plants some benefits. And one is here is uh, that the plants grow better. Uh, with microbes, they actually will, pr will produce, the bacteria will produce uh, plant hormones like ethylene, for example, and that will cause plants to grow more and grow bigger. Pathogens, what happens uh, when microbes are on plants is plants become more resistant to diseases. Uh, for one thing, microbes will make the plant itself more oxidatively stress tolerant. And therefore, it is not as weak, and it's able to tolerate pathogens, potential pathogens. And the other, the other issue is that many of these microbes, these endophytic microbes, especially bacteria, will colonize pathogenic fungi. And they will go onto the fungi, and they'll cause them to be non-viral. They'll cause them to not cause disease. In fact, some of the fungi, once they're colonized by these endophytic bacteria, they can then become endophytes themselves and grow in the plant and benefit the plant so long as those bacteria are there. Uh, so it's a case where there's an endophytic community forming, uh, but it only happens when you have certain of these endophytic bacteria already present. Endophytes will also, some of them will go out from the plant, out from the plant roots, and they'll colonize other neighboring plants and they'll make those plants less able to grow. They'll go into the tissues of the plants, into the roots of the plants, 
in a phenomenon that we call endobiome interference. And they'll cause those plants to grow much less. They'll reduce their growth. And so those competitor weeds won't be as competitive or uh, as weedy as they would be uh, if those endophytes weren't colonizing them. And finally, certain of the endophytes can uh, go into plants and cause the plants to be more resistant to being consumed by insects or animals that might eat, feed on the plant. Okay, so uh, one issue here, uh, because these endophytes are seed transmitted, frequently seed transmitted, you have to be careful with how you treat seeds. And uh, for example, anything that you do that might kill microbes on seeds or reduce the microbes on the seeds, you don't have to kill them all, but even reduce them is a problem because they need a certain level of microbes in order to have the endophytes that they need to grow properly. And uh, for example, one thing that we do in modern agriculture that is really a no-no uh, is that we, for example, with cotton seeds, we treat our cotton seeds with uh, acids. It's called acid delenting. Then we essentially soak them in concentrated sulfuric acid, acid to digest away the fibers, the delenting, it's lent on the seeds, right? Acid delenting. We remove all those fibers with the acid, but it also kills the bacteria on the surface of the cotton seed. That has a, a very bad effect on uh, cotton seedlings. It makes the seedlings that go from those seeds, that grow from the seeds, it makes them weak. Uh, the plants frequently are cotton plants, can't ever recover uh, because they're growing in soils that are not diverse in microbes, soils where we, where we essentially destroy or reduce the microbiology in the soil. So the, so the plants can't actually acquire new microbes that, because we've removed the ones that are there and because they're not able to acquire new ones, the plants are really at a disadvantage without their microbes. They don't grow well unless you squirt nitrogen on them, you give them nitrogen. They're, you're, they're required to give nitrogen because they don't have the microbes there. They also require fungicides and pesticides to control insects and herbicides and everything. Cotton is said to be a dirty crop and it's likely dirty because we've removed those microbes. So probably if we put those microbes back or we treated these seeds a little bit differently, we could probably get away with a lot less agrochemicals. Anything that you do to hurt the microbes vectored in seeds and on seeds is really bad for the seedling, bad for the plant, bad for the crop. Okay, for example, some seeds have husks on them, um, Bermuda grass. Bermuda grass seeds come with a, a husk naturally on the seed and that husk covers the seed and it also is the essentially the structure that vectors the bacteria. And so what we do with Bermuda grass seeds to again to make them germinate faster is people will remove the husk. And, and then after they've done that, then they have to coat this, the seed with fungicides because the pathogens come and eat those uh, seeds up. They germinate faster, but pathogens come right away. Actually, we compromise the Bermuda grass seed because we remove those husks. Anywhere we, where husks are removed, it's a bad thing. We remove microbes. If you sterilize seeds in any way to say you want to uh, remove pathogens, well, you may have a, a non-target effect if you're, if you're sterilizing seeds to remove pathogens, you're gonna hit your beneficial microbes also. Re the result is gonna be seedlings that grow worse and that are more susceptible to fungal disease. When the bacteria are there, the bacterial endophytes are present, they will actually prevent fungal diseases by colonizing those, those pathogens and causing them to be less virulent. If you gather seeds too early, uh, say soon as they form, and then try to complete maturation indoors, that's also not a good thing because there is this process with wild seeds that they will mature outside exposed to the elements called, we could call this a post-maturation phase for seeds. And that post-maturation phase is actually for the microbes to develop. And in that time, say for example, a grass seed, in that time, 
the microbes on those surfaces of the seeds, on the glooms and limbs on the surface of the seed, those microbes are growing. You have moisture there. You may have water, part of water splashing up with some microbes coming onto the plant. Uh, but you have more colonization or more a maturation of the endophyte community on those seeds. If you pull the seeds early before that endophyte community is fully mature, then that seedling is not going to be as capable as one that has its full microbial community present. So coatings with fungicides could affect the microbial community on the seeds. There are fungal endophytes naturally occurring on seeds, and they will be part of that community. Knocking those fungal endophytes out may or may not have an effect on the other, uh, the other members of the community, but they certainly may. Actually, the best idea is to grow those plants, you know, so that the microbes will, the microbial community will mature on those seeds. And then you use those mature seeds, those seeds that have been developed in nature with their microbes, then you use those to plant your crops. And if you need to use something to control disease, that you use a microbial bio pesticide, if you can get it. And there are microbial biopesticides that could be used on, on crops. You have to, you know, some, an organism, in other words, a living pesticide rather than a chemical. Another major effect is that, that endophytes protect plants from diseases. In fact, we think that you don't need fungicides at all if you use bacteria to control, control fungal diseases. And I think this is an area that we need a lot more work in, but it's a, it has a lot of potential. Uh, and uh, let's see, this, this is an example of this work. Uh, regarding a fungal endophyte. Um, okay, this is Epicloy fastuki, a red fescue. This is a, one of the Rutgers. We have a big turf grass breeding program here. And uh, the, the plot to the left has the endophyte in it. That's the Epicloy endophyte. And uh, the plot to the right doesn't have the endophyte there. And you can see all this brown area, and that's due to a disease called dollar spot. And you can see without the endophyte, that fungus disease, that, that dollar spot basically had its way in that, with that grass. Took, it took that turf out for the most part, okay, compared to where the endophyte was present, almost no effect. So an endophyte can make a huge difference in terms of health of the plant and its protection from disease. We could uh, refer to this whole phenomenon of protection from disease or protection from consumption by herbivores, insects, uh, or the pathogens. Uh, we, could, we could call this a phenomenon that Keith Clay actually is an investigator now at Tulane University, but he termed it, he called this a defensive mutualism. Defensive mutualism, meaning it's a symbiosis, the symbiosis between the fungus or the bacterium and the plant being defensive to protect the plant from something, right? Uh, it ha has also been referred to as the bodyguard hypothesis. And this is the idea that the endophyte actually in the plant is protecting its host plant from anything that might come and degrade or consume or damage the host plant. It's the bodyguard hypothesis. Endophytes also affect chemical contents of, of, of plants. And uh, uh, one example of this is a, one study we did with, with carrots, looking at carotenoids. And, and what we did basically is to take some endophytes, my graduate student in this case took some endophytes out of celery and out of cumin and out of parsley, parsley which are relatives of carrot. So three different bacteria and then put them into carrot and evaluated carotenoids using HPLC analysis. This is from the analysis. And you can see the control here to the left, this little small bar. Okay, this is the carrot amount of carotenes that uh, we measured uh, in the carrots where we did not add these bacteria. So that's without added bacteria. Then 
in bacteria, bacterium one, it, it looks like it had no effect. So this, this to me looks like it probably didn't even colonize. It probably wasn't even compatible with carrot. Then you look at bacterium two, uh, you can see there's a major increase in beta carotenes in those plants. Looks like double or triple, double at least, double two and a half times maybe. So it had a major increase in carotene when you add that bacterium. Compared to bacterium three, increased slightly so it colonized, but didn't have the same benefit. So you can see certain endophytes are gonna really improve the metabolite health component, antioxidant component contents of plants when you put them, put them into the plant. So there's a, there's a whole area there that could be studied. This shows that alpha carotenes, and you see essentially the same thing. You see the carotenes in general, it's like two, two and a half times more, something like that, with that parsley in the fight right there. Made a big difference. So uh, just kind of to summar summarize, endophytes are really critical for plants in a lot of ways. I mean, they, they can, in a kind of general scenario, they can deter herbivore feeding. Not all will deter herbivore feeding, but some will deter herbivore feeding. They can stimulate root development. They also stimulate shoot development. For example, if you don't have any endophytic bacteria on roots, you won't have any root hairs. Endophytes will increase nutrients in the plant. They're very important for nutrient acquisition from soils. In fact, the microbes will carry nutrients into the plants directly. The endophytes will alter the chemistry of plants. They'll increase antioxidants and things like carotenes and even enzymatic antioxidants. They'll interact with soil pathogens and boost their growth. They'll protect plants from disease. If you remove, it's a simple experiment that you can do actually. If you remove the microbes, from seeds, and then compare that to seed seedlings uh, grown where you don't remove the microbes, you'll see that the seedlings where you remove the microbes, you're going to be highly susceptible to soil fungal diseases like Fusarium and Rhizoctonia and stuff like that. The endophytes suppress pathogens on plant surfaces in many, in several different ways, as I mentioned. They'll increase stress resistance of plants. Endophytes make those plants hardier. 